Samantha is a lady who's gonna show up here. I'm gonna tell her what type she is, whether she's an elk or deer, or perhaps an INTPQ, or maybe an ESP. Regardless, I'm gonna say to her, here's your personality, cause I'm host Eric. I always start these sessions the same way, by asking how many of my typing sessions have you seen before? I've seen a few. Um, I went back and forth with a few of them. Okay. Um, that was actually today. The last time I watched was today, then about a week ago. Okay. So, did when you were watching it, you think to yourself at any point, oh, "I don't, I shouldn't watch this because I don't want to be influenced by what I see," or did you think, oh, "It doesn't matter." Yeah, I did feel a bit guilty by it. I thought maybe I'm cheating here or something. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it's like the only thing that the reason I ask that question mostly is if somebody's watched a shit ton of them then it opens up another line of questioning that goes okay what do you think I'm doing when I'm asking these questions but if, if they haven't then I'm, I don't bother with those questions alright <laughs> um, alright so uh, let me ask this first I guess do you think of yourself as First, somebody who knows, somebody who acts, somebody who decides, or somebody who reacts? Somebody who reacts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you see yourself more as somebody who relies on your experience or somebody who relies on your instincts? I think... It's a bit hard because it's a bit of both, but I would say my instincts, because when I get a thought or something, I tend to really dwell on that and believe that. Okay. Um, can you think of an occasion when you were someplace and somebody was saying some stuff and you either remained silent or agreed and then later thought I should have thought about that more I, I should have called bullshit on that can you think of an occasion when in your life when that's happened yeah a lot I tend to agree with people just to kind of you know I, I don't want to look like it's like I'm scared of putting their feelings in a way so I kind of keep my real opinion to myself can you think of a specific example of that occurring um with, with, with most people, I would say, people that I don't really know, but I think that people that I actually get to know and like friends, I'm more open with them and I don't mind saying something that's kind of personal. But I think with people that I don't know very well, I'm really careful with what I say. Okay, so, um, well, by specific example, I mean like, it should sound like this, ideally, if you can. If you can, it's fine, but, um, like, well, for example, I went to the local convenience store the other day and the guy behind the counter was being really like friendly and talking about how he, he loved this shirt he was wearing that he got at this local show and I thought that shirt was hideous and the band was terrible but I just said yeah they're they're great like that's what a specific example sounds like oh right yeah uh, you actually remembered me about something actually um something quite similar to that. I did meet up with a friend and she had this new jacket on. Um, that was about a month ago and she asked me, do you like my jacket? And I was like, Rick, yeah, it's really nice. I love it. And I didn't. <laughs> I okay. didn't like it at all. Okay. So, um, I'm going to tell you a story and then a, a little anecdote and then I want you to to at the end go, well, I guess that's why they always say, miggity, miggity, meow. Okay? Mm hmm So, it's, it's you're summing up the, the lesson I should take away from the thing. All right, so here's the anecdote. Okay. Uh, the other day, my, my sink broke, and uh, the, I, needed, I needed to use a screwdriver to fix it, and it was a Phillips head screw 
but I only had a flathead screwdriver in at, on hand, and uh, so I just tried to use the flathead, make it go into the little slots a little bit, but it was so challenging and frustrating, eventually I just threw it down and quit. Okay, so now you, you do that, your part. Well, I think that you should have thought about it more, and because I think that's really impulsive of just quitting like that. You should actually read into it and know what you're doing. So... I think you need to learn more about what you're actually doing first before diving into something. Because it doesn't really sound like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> okay, so... Um, is there... Can you think of, a, of an aphorism of some sort or make one up for that? Such as, you know, small, small fish shouldn't swim in big waters or something like that. Ah... <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm not really good at that kind of stuff. I can't come up with stuff like that. <laughs> okay. So now let's try it the other direction. I'm going to give you an old saying, and you come up with the anecdote part that would that would elicit that somebody coming up with that old saying, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so the old saying is, um, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. <laughs> okay, so you can't go. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, can you tell me? Uh, it's evening time in where, where you are, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me what you had for breakfast this morning? Um, I didn't actually have breakfast. I had lunch for breakfast. What did you have, um, what did you have for lunch? Ham and cheese baguette. Did you make it yourself? No, I bought it. I bought it from the local shop. Okay. Lazy. <laughs> um. Is it a restaurant that makes it to order, or did you buy it from, like, a convenience store? Um, well, it's a shop called Greg's here. It's like a pastry shop. Oh, okay. So it's just sitting there, and you go and buy it. I see, I see. Um, all right. Uh, how many hours of sleep do you think you need a night? I need a lot of sleep. I can't function with barely any sleep. Um, probably about nine, nine hours. Okay, and do you usually get that? Um, give or take, it depends. Depends on how I'm feeling. I get that if I'm if I'm calm and there's I'm stress free, I can sleep like a baby. But then, I wake up a lot during the night if I've got something on my mind. Okay, so let's say you don't have something on your mind, the uh, mm -hmm. particular importance, just the day's mm -hmm. trivial activities. Mm -hmm. And you're lying down in bed, and you're about to go to sleep. Are you remembering the events of the day? Are you thinking forward to tomorrow's events? Are you telling yourself little make-believe stories? Are you counting sheep? What's going on in your head? I'm thinking of really unrealistic stuff. <laughs> okay, so you're um, pretending? That's what I do. Yeah, I I'm mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is what I do. Um, it, it's funny because people don't really talk about that, but there's certain personality types that mm -hmm. that do that, but they're embarrassed about it usually. So um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see. How, what is the physical body sensation of the emotion sadness? The physical, the physical sensation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't really know what you mean by that because sadness is a mental. It's a feeling in your head. I don't know why it would affect your body. <laughs> Have you ever felt a lump in the throat when you're about to cry? I like kind of goes tight in a way. Right. Yeah, like that. Do you think that um, mm -hmm. fear has a physical sensation? Oh yeah, for me anyway, it does. Um, like you start to sweat and your heart starts to race and you feel like you're all froze up. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the physicality of emotions is is you have much more self awareness about physicality of emotions that are are, I guess you'd say, that demand pressing attention than 
emotions mm-hmm. that don't demand pressing attention. All, all emotions do have physicalities to them, but most people who aren't introverted feeling in the front stack have the same, if they haven't thought about it really before, they have the same basic reaction as you do to that. What, physical sensations mm-hmm. from emotions? Yeah, they're totally physical things. But regardless, mm-hmm. um, uh, okay, so let's see. Um, I was about to ask you a follow-up on the emotion thing. Um, oh, what emotion are you feeling right now? Um, I'm feeling positive, intrigued. Okay. And what emotion do you think I'm feeling right now? Uh, I think you're feeling very calm and collected and like you know where you're going with this (laughs) okay cool yeah and what do you think about the statement emotions get stuck in the body i really relate with that a lot (laughs) that's me okay so do you periodically would you say that that translates to sometimes i feel like i need to cry but i can't Not really. When I need to cry, I cry. <laughs> okay, so um, which emotions get stuck in your body then? I would say anger. I get a lot of anger and frustration and stuff stuck in me, and I don't want to display that because I'm not that kind of person. So it's really bad. Does it periodically erupt in a volcano of rage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see. And everyone's like, whoa, hey, Samantha. I, yeah. You're not like this normally. What's going on? Yeah, and it makes you feel like you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, the correct answer to that is, look, the fact that I haven't sh- shat on your face before is not evidence <laughs> that my shitting on it now is wrong, but that you've encouraged me, you've taken advantage of my niceness for far too long. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so... Can you tell me synonyms for the word mischievous? Um. Or mischievous. Mysterious? Um. Pesky? Uh. It's like, I know the word, I know them all, but they're just not coming to the surface. <laughs> um, Impish. There's one I've never thought of before for that. Impish. It's a tough word to come up with synonyms for, that's why I use it. Um, yeah. I've never even heard that word in my life. <laughs> <clears throat> um, okay, so... Let's say... Uh, Rachel and I are in town and somewhere in the United Kingdom and mm-hmm. uh, we knock on your door and say "We come on let's go we're going to a party <laughs> now what do you need to know before you're willing to go to that party what do you need to know about it and or do you just jump in the car um, I, I need to know who's going that's the most important part of it um, we'll find out when we get there how's that answer for you not good enough mm, I, I want to know who's there because if it's people I don't like I'm, I'm not gonna go at all <laughs> I'll have some excuse what if it's people you um, don't know oh that'll be okay I like to beat people I don't know <laughs> you don't want to go to the villain party is what you're saying yeah yeah I don't like villains <laughs> no, no one does <laughs> right. um Okay, when you go to that party and you're meeting new people and such, let's say you go and you talk, you, you find yourself standing next to Shy Joe. I'll be mm-hmm. Shy Joe. Now you okay. you get me to talk. Okay. Uh, hi, how are you? You enjoying yourself? 
I'm I'm having an adequate time. Oh, that's good. Uh, do you want to come join me um, with the others and have a chat? Join you with the others, huh? It seems like there's a lot of people over there, though. Yeah, but it can just be you and me. We we can just sit together. We, you don't have to talk to them. Hmm. What do you think they're talking about? <laughs> Load of rubbish. Boring stuff. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable going until I know for sure what this topic of conversation is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. So you're you are you actually inclusive like that of people? Uh not everyone, but Like if you saw somebody I... sitting up by themselves, would you go over and talk to them? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um All right. Can you tell me a story from your life about a time when a single significant event made you learn a lesson that you never forgot, but it's not about something important. My example I give is this one time when I was a teenager and my dad yelled at me for leaving a cereal bowl in the sink without rinsing it out first because cereal and milk, when it dries, that gets really cemented to the bowl, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I never left, I always rinsed out cereal bowls thereafter. Something like that. Can you tell me one of those kind of stories? Mm -hmm. The only things I can think of are actually important. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. then let's talk a little bit about your media consumption taste. When you aren't watching videos that teach you anything, in other words, you're just you're just consuming videos or movies or whatever for entertainment. What kind of stuff do you watch? Um, so this is like just for my own pleasure, my own entertainment. Yeah, just like okay. I just want to veg out and watch junk TV that I like. Or no, just because it's my TV that I like. Uh, stuff about outer space, uh, ancient history, stuff like that. You like ancient aliens kind of stuff? Stuff like aliens built the pyramids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that kind of mysterious stuff. You, you like paranormal, like paranormal caught on camera? I, I love that yeah, show. Yeah, I love that. I, love <laughs> yeah, that. I cannot get it. <laughs> paranormal caught on camera is really the reason why I kept Discovery Plus. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I've since watched Alaskan Killer Bigfoot. Have you watched that one? I don't think I've seen that one, but... Alaskan I Killer will. Bigfoot is the best of your Bigfoot shows. Let me tell you right now. Let me let the cat out. Okay, you need to make up your mind, kitty. Inside kitty or outside kitty? This cat of mine. She likes to stand at the doorway and make take a long time to make a decision about whether she's going to go outside or not. <laughs> but when the sun comes in here, it bugs me. Um, okay. So, uh... Alright, what, what is it that... You describe to me a, like, a perfect episode of one of those kind of paranormal things. Like, what is it doing successfully? Is it telling... Is it more telling a story... Uh, that is kind of speculative or the more convincing you of the legitimacy of it? it? It's making me really feel fascinated and making me think of all all the possibilities of how this can be real, how it can't be real. Okay. Um, like that. Have you actually watched the Paranormal on Camera, that specific show? It's because it's got these specific people who comment on each of the things afterwards. I was gonna. Oh, um, gonna show no. you. Okay. <laughs> no. You gotta check it out. It's it's a good one. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, they, it's like one of the people comments on it by saying things like, "Well, this could be a, a time portal. This could be a yeah. This could be a yeah." One of the people kind of mm -hmm. comments on it like, "So we can pretty much be sure this is a legitimate video because it doesn't have any yeah yeah yeah." So it's like there's different ways of commenting on it. If you were a commentator. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'd be a more of a, a speculate, speculator as to what it might be or more of an explainer as to why it's something, why it's not something regular? I think I'd be more of a speculator. Okay. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't really want to sit and say exactly what something is because I don't know. 
I, I'm never sure on anything, so I would sit and think, I wonder what this could be. This 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 is so amazing. This is so fascinating. I wonder what this is. Blah blah blah. Okay. What do you prefer, aliens, ghosts, or cryptids? Ghosts. Okay. Mm. Um. How about your music tastes? Do you listen to a lot of music or very little music? And also, do you listen more to stuff you listen to a long for a long time, or are you always looking for new stuff? Um, my music taste is varies. It's not just one genre. It's um, I go from trance to metal. It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit up and down. Okay, but is it stuff you've? Is it sort of an accumulated archive of stuff that you like? The, continues gradually growing or is it more of a shifting archive of what you're into now moving along through through time uh i'd say the second one okay mm -hmm. how long does it take you when you first hear a song to know whether or not it's good straight away for some reason all right yeah And do you, do you, can you ex remember any examples of a time where you thought, oh, this song is great, and you put it on like a playlist, and then you, after the second or third time you listen to it, you're like, ah, I was wrong about this. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> once, once I like a song, I like it for a long time. Okay. Um, I listen to the same song over and over and over again. <laughs> okay. Can you give me an example of a track that I might be familiar with that you think is really good, you listen to a lot, or have listened to a lot? Um... I quite like, um... It's like a song called Main Circus, and it's by DJ Tiesto. Main Circus? Mind Circus. It's Mind Circus. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll have to check it out later. Um... Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can you talk to me about your own creative processes? I see you have music after your name. Yeah, I like to sing, I like to songwrite, um, I like to draw. I think I'm quite good at a lot of creative things, so I can't really focus on one thing because I've, I like to do quite a lot of different creative things, like drawing, singing, um, I even like dancing. Um, the one thing that I don't really focus on is like, crafts like things that things that enjoy that like like practical stuff mm -hmm. i mainly like you know thinking about stuff more than actually making stuff if you get me what is describe the process of writing a song feeling inspired feeling moved feeling a lot of positive emotions what are the mechanics of it? Like, do you record yourself singing parts? That, or, or, or do you do you record yourself improvising until you come across something? Or do you have the idea first and get it down so you don't forget it, or what? I would say I improvise. Like, I'll, I'll put little chunks down and then listen to them and see how they actually sound with the lyrics. Okay. Um, all right, so let me try some, let me do some tea questions. Can you break down the task of taking out the trash, or as you call it, the rubbish, into exactly five steps? Okay, um, number one, get a bin bag. This is gonna sound. <laughs> uh, number two, empty the bin into the bin bag. Number three, close the bin bag. Number four, carry the bin bag out to the to the bin. Number five, put in the bin. <laughs> okay, so that's good. You successfully broke down 
taking out or oh, emptying a waste basket and taking it out basically mm -hmm. uh, all right uh let's try let's try it from this angle what's the proper number of steps to break down instructions on brushing your teeth into um so you have to think of the number of how many steps yeah uh About, that's roughly about five. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, let's try some TI questions. If some pigs make cheese and some cheese makers are French, are some pigs necessarily French? I'm lost already at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Well, that's that's fairly. Uh, let's try. But I, uh, all right, let's try this this other kind of question. Uh, can you tell me who my mother's mother's husband is in relationship to me? So that would be your grandmother's husband, and that would be. But that would be my grandfather's. Yeah, it's your, your grandfather. grandfather. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, trouble. I, if you give me one second, I've got a. Oh, he just put his head back in. I got a cat out there. The stray cat wants me to feed it, and he's not going to leave me alone <laughs> until I do. So just give me a minute. I'll be right back. <laughs> Kitty hurt his paw. He's limping. Oh. It doesn't look like it's too bad. It's not like like inflamed or anything, but he's he's limping. Um Okay, so can you tell me what tomorrow's yesterday's yesterday's tomorrow is? No. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. So that's fine. That's that's nice and and clear cut on the TI. Uh, so then the question becomes: F E F I where? Okay. Well, it's pretty clear cut on the TI, but it could be fourth. Um. Yeah, it could be fourth. And that would be over the chair. Okay. So I, I basically have you narrow it down to three possible types. So I'm going to try to figure out which one of those three you are. Okay. Um, are you more likely to be somebody who thinks Miaz not being a team player? Or are you more likely to be somebody about whom others think Samantha's not being a team player? Um, I think they're not being a team player. Okay. So let's say you've decided to go to a party. Are you more likely to make the statement, I mean, I hope we have a good time, but you know, Judy and Bob are going to be there and they're so fussy, so... I just hope that they have vegan food. Or are you likely to say, 
Uh, well, I hope they have vegan food. I hope they have the shit that I want because I am not in the mood for, you know, they can worry about their emotions. I'm worried about me. Uh, the second one. Okay. Yeah. Um, or let's say you have a friend that you've known for a while. Are you more, are you the one who says, where do you want to eat? Or are you the one who says, let's eat here? Or are you the one who answers, where do you want to eat? Um, I'll ask them a place that I like. Do you want to eat want at Miaz? Do you want to eat at Miaz? Yeah. Okay. And... Why and it, what's your reasoning for wanting to go to Miaz? Like, have you thought about it ahead of time and wanted to go there for a while, or is it an impulsive like? You know what? I feel like Miaz right now. Yeah, yeah. It's. I would say it's more of an impulsive. Yeah. Okay. Um. Have you heard the? The question about the peacock at the bowling alley? No. Alright, so I'm going to tell you the first half of this short little tale, and then you tell mm -hmm. me the second half of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, a lady walks into the bowling alley, and she's got a peacock on a leash. And she goes up to the counter and says to the guy, I'd like to rent a lane. And I'd like to rent shoes for myself and shoes for my bowling shoes for my peacock as well. And the man says, actually, we don't let peacocks allowed in here. And she says, well, he's my service animal, so you have to let him in. And the guy says, well, okay, fine, but we still don't have shoes that we can rent to peacocks. And she says, you're just discriminating against me. Let me talk to your manager. Now you finish the story. Um... So then, then the manager comes through and, and he says, what seems to be the problem here? And then that person replies back the situation and the manager is just like, what do you, what do you take this place for? Are you crazy? And the person just starts to make a scene even more and um, they leave. <laughs> sounds like it sounds like a Karen situation to be honest <laughs> okay have you heard yeah. me ask the troll question before no all right so in this one it's like a choose your own adventure kind of storybook question like kind of like a role-playing mm -hmm. question your your character in this story is you're the mayor or lord or whatever of this of this middle mm -hmm. medieval middle ages town okay the, mm -hmm. the town is split into by a river you used to have a bridge, and when you had the bridge, you'd take your your food across the bridge. Because on one side of the river are the farms and the silos and the grain and stuff like that, and livestock. And on the other side of the river is the town and the villagers, you know, the merchants and the craftsmen and you and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. when your bridge washes away in a winter storm, a river troll comes and takes up residence in your river. Now, you started after the after the bridge washed away you started taking the food across the river in boats but river trolls have a magical power they can run up to any boat that's carrying food across the river in it and whether it's one crust of bread or a whole dead cow and they can take 10% of it and run away before anybody can stop them no matter how well locked up it is or whatever it's, that's their magical power and, he, and the troll tells you it's a troll tax it's a, it's a tax he's imposing on your people for protecting you in some fashion and unfortunately though you only have enough food saved up for the winter just barely and if this troll takes 10 percent of your food all winter long some of your people will starve and you can't rebuild the bridge until spring so what do you do mayor i think i'm just gonna wait out till spring and wait to the most but then efficient 10, time 10 percent of your people will starve because you have just barely enough food saved up for winter. That's without the troll taking 10% of it. Hmm. 
Well, I think I'm going to sit and try and talk with the with the with the people, you know, and see if they've got any ideas of what to do, what they can bring to the table. Because I don't really know, so maybe they'll maybe they'll have any, you know, some good ideas. So I'll write down a list and see what we can do to try and sort this situation out. Okay, interesting. That's such a that's such a vague response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's such an interfacey response. You know, it's super interfacey. Okay, so mm -hmm. um. Question then is it third slide, yeah, sixth slide? Okay. Um, you don't. I, I think I can eliminate one of the three possible types that I was considering. So I think. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So. You have world like power. You have thirty seconds to to give advice to the world, and in that thirty seconds. It gets translated into everybody's language and broadcast directly into their ears so everybody in the world hears it. What do you say? Mm -hmm. I say follow your heart, follow your dreams, do what makes you happy and live every moment to the full um, and don't let anyone bring you down. Like carpe diem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... So, can you think of an instance where you you should have said something, but you did something instead? Such that, like, I should have told him, yeah, 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 but instead I just hung up on him. Um... I, I would say, I would say with my, my friend, um... They were, they were being foolish, and they were doing stuff that they shouldn't be, and I was just listening to them, and I didn't want to say anything to, you know, trigger them. So, um, I just kind of stayed silent, and I, I really shouldn't have. And do you, after the fact, did you say to yourself, "I should have said, meh, 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 meh"? Or just, I should have said something. Yeah, I should have at least said something to, you know, that might have made or change our mind or view the situation different. Okay. <laughs> um, so, now, in that instance, instead of saying something, you just listened, right? But... Mm -hmm. Can you think of an instance where instead of saying something, you did something? Like, I should have talked to the guy, but instead I punched him in the face. Or, <laughs> um, like that, you know? Um. I, I don't know if this counts, but when, when someone was saying stuff to me that I, I wasn't agreeing with instead of standing up for myself and instead of talking back i blocked them does that count <laughs> i mean it depends do you think do you think you did it, the way you did it was correct no you do you wish you <laughs> it was foolish you wish you had done it differently yeah because it made me feel like a coward just you know walking away from something i see okay mm -hmm. um can you think of an instance when you made a decision using how you authentically felt about something and determined later that you should have used some sort of cold, dry logic to make the decision instead? I would say trusting people too much. Um, like people, I've had this gut feeling that they're not trustworthy and then I've thought, just ignore that. That's probably nothing. And then they've ended up to be really deceptive in the end. Okay. Do you think that mm -hmm. it's more important for another person, not yourself, to uphold the value of honesty or kindness? Um... I would say honesty. 
but as long as I kinged about it at the same time. Okay. Um, and do you think it's more important for a person to, not yourself, to uphold a value of um, following through, being reliable, or uh, of, um, of being affirming, a positive, positive voice about you to you? Um, I would say the second one. Okay. Now, do you consider yourself more reliable or affirming? Uh, more reliable or what, sorry? Or affirming. Um, what, what would you mean by affirming? Like, an example of that? Like, you you can be counted on to, hey, Judy, you know what? You do not need to beat yourself up. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are a catch. That guy was just an asshole. That's being affirming. It's like building up somebody's confidence about themselves or saying nice things to them or complimenting them on their shirt or whatever. Um, I think I would be the second one. Definitely. Okay. Affirming. What makes you more angry at yourself if you accidentally hurt someone's feelings and I'll give you an example of how or if you embarrass yourself in a way like make a social faux pas um, so the example of accidentally hurting somebody's feelings is there are these two sisters Agnes and Betty and one of them looks kind of older than the other one even though she, she is older but she looks even older than she is older and you say, oh, it's so great that you and your daughter came here to visit. But they're really sisters, so you accidentally hurt the, the older one's feelings. Okay. And mm -hmm. in the second instance, um, you, uh, you, you were talking to this guy named, named Devin all evening long, but you kept calling him Daniel. I think I would feel bad at the second one more. When you say bad, do you mean mad at yourself or or something else? Yeah, I would feel angry at myself for being that way. Okay. It, yeah, it would bother me a bit more than the first one. I would still be upset at the first one, but the other one would bother me more. Okay. Um, and if somebody criticizes you and which of these two following ways does it make you feel more defensive? They criticize you for not being original enough, or they criticize you for not being correct or logical enough? Um, the second one. Okay. That's usual, yeah. Okay. Um... Do you think, it, 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 pretend, I don't know if you have a significant other right now or not, but pretend you don't and you're looking for a significant other. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, is it more important that that significant other be counted on to remember everything or that they be counted on to realize like, hey, better watch out, there's a car coming. Like, shit, like observe observe realities for you. Remember things for you or, or observe realities for you? Um, I think remember things for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think that life is that in general for most people that the best parts of their life are in their youth and then they kind of go steadily downhill from there or that most people don't really get started into the best parts of their life until they're 30 years old and then move up into good stuff from there 
Um, I suppose it's different for every individual, but I think it's probably the earlier days are the better days. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's my typing of you. From everything seems pretty consistent with ESFP. Mm -hmm. um, the TI polar seems pretty clear cut. The extroverted mm -hmm. intuition seems eighth slot, not first. And your mm -hmm. your values are all consistent. They line up with those answers for uh, ESFP, as does your your four or five, which is you're you're able to tell anecdotes, but you don't naturally do so. So mm -hmm. when I ask you for examples, you give me generalities, but you can produce examples when pressed, and those examples can match the example of an example that I give. So mm -hmm. that's very consistent with four or five and. Uh, um, and the fact that you would would prioritize, say, you know, basically the SI aspect of people that is available for you to observe over, say, the NI aspect is also consistent with an SE DOM. And uh, so that's my typing of you. Can you can you tell me what you thought you were, or what what you thought coming in? Um. I actually had quite a few. I had um, ISFP, ENFP, and INFP. Okay. Yeah, ISFP is not a terrible typing of you, but I'm pretty confident you're TI polar and not NE polar. Uh, the mm -hmm. the uh, ENFP, INFP, those kind of typings that you might get from somebody are going to link specifically to you being creative. So... They're going to mm -hmm. say, well, you're creative, you make things, um, so you must be an NE person. But those are people, that's just people who don't have conscious or dom. Like, for me, as an extroverted intuition dominant person, I I really understand what it feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like, how it, how it plays out. Yeah. Your description mm -hmm. of a creative process, no matter how creative you are, is not one that is a willful or conscious extroverted intuition. You talk about... When I ask you about your creative process, you talked about your feelings, <laughs> 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 which I thought is it's just great. It's like it's people, people approach the questions and the, and things in life so dramatically differently. It's 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 crazy. It's, mm -hmm. it's striking. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I do think you're an ESFP, even though you have a rather introverted affect, and so. A lot of people are going to say, well, aren't ESFPs crazy party girls? Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions, uh, comments, or things you want me to follow up um, on? But I, I'm not upset with the type. I do relate with it to an extent. <laughs> um, um, yes. I actually do. I actually do relate with the SFP a lot when I read about it. Actually, I just didn't know if I was an introvert or extrovert. I, I just I kind of feel a bit in between there. That's a bit difficult to find out. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. On an affect level, it's totally understandable why you would be confused about it. But it, mm -hmm. introversion and extroversion aren't actually like functions. They're their categories so mm -hmm. it's like you're an extrovert just because you have an extrovert function first but se is an action function of following through carpe diem kind of a thing that may or mm -hmm. may not link very clearly to conventional colloquial expressions of extroversion you know yeah so and i, I would recommend if you want to see an esfp who is doing good work in the cognitive function field? Then check out Amy Y. She's an ESFP, and she's the she's another typologist who who tends to get people right <laughs> for, for whatever reason. I don't, she's not using my process exactly because she's not she's TI polar like you, but she mm -hmm. she's way better than most other typologists out there. So it just goes mm -hmm. to show you: the, don't listen to the stereotypes about a type. They, yeah. are, they are their cognitive function stack and how well they integrate their life and their stack and their doings and stuff has a lot to mm -hmm. do with particular elements. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. So oh. I'm going to stop this recording then. Um, I can share it with you privately or I can publish if you're cool with it. Yeah, you can publish it. All right, thanks. So I'll do that yeah. forthwith. Okay.